This video is going to cover making sulfuric acid, but starting with just elemental sulfur. Some information about this. Sulfuric acid occurs naturally around volcanoes. And in case you don't know one, what it looks like, I kind of drew a volcano right there. It does this by taking elemental sulfur, which is around volcanoes, of course, turning it into sulfur dioxide because of the oxygen in the air. And this becomes sulfurous acid, H2SO3, due to the water content in the air or moisture. And this again becomes sulfuric acid due to the oxygen in the air. So this whole process occurs around volcanoes and it's not uncommon to find sulfuric acid occurring right from elemental sulfur. We can almost reproduce this whole process in the lab and that's what we're gonna do here. The intermediate step of sulfurous acid is interesting because it has a very strong irritating odor. And of course, if you smell that stuff, you might start to cry. But in nature, as I said, it becomes sulfuric acid through the high temperatures and the presence of O2. This is the part we can't reproduce in the lab, at least in my lab. So in the lab here, I'm going to use hydrogen peroxide to do this. Another quick note, when sulfurous acid becomes sulfuric acid, it no longer has any odor. So we first need to produce our sulfur dioxide, as I said, and this best is done by burning sulfur in the presence of air. So this occurs at 232 degrees Celsius, 450 Fahrenheit. Once we have uh, the sulfur and oxygen here with some heat, here's our sulfur dioxide, but we also get sulfur trioxide, which is two sulfurs and three oxygens, giving us two sulfur trioxides. This is heavier, and this will come into play later because we can actually try to filter this out. Interestingly, powdered sulfur burns at a lower temperature of around 190 degrees Celsius. That, of course, makes sense. There's more oxygen around each uh, particle, so it would burn easier. When we get our sulfur dioxide and we bubble it through water, it produces sulfurous acid. Sulfur dioxide is best uh, dissolved in water if the water is cold. Sulfurous acid, of course, will become sulfuric acid by adding the hydrogen peroxide. The overall reaction for this is sulfur plus O2 plus heat yields sulfur dioxide plus the water yields sulfurous acid plus the hydrogen peroxide yields the sulfuric acid, water, and if there's any excess H2O2, of course, that will be there. Notice that across this entire equation, there's one mole of each one. Our materials we need are sulfur, three grams, water, 100 milliliters, a glass tube, an air pump, a torch, and 30% hydrogen peroxide. This asterisk right here is to help me remember to go over the stoichiometry of this whole equation right here and what we can expect. Okay, here it is. So we're going to start with three grams of sulfur, and we can figure out the molar amount of that just by dividing it by its molar mass, and we find out we have 0 0.094 moles of sulfur. In the equation we just saw, everything's one to one, 0 0.094 moles of sulfur will produce 0 0.094 moles of sulfur dioxide. Also from the equation, one to one, 0 0.094 moles of sulfur dioxide will produce 0 0.094 moles of sulfurous acid. Because I determined all of this using 100 milliliters because that's what I was actually going to use, we now need to figure out the concentration using a full liter, which will give us our actual molar concentration. So we take the moles of our H2SO3 divided by 0.1, which is 100 milliliters, and that gives us 0 0.94 moles. And if we convert that to percentage, we will have approximately 7.67% of sulfurous acid in the end. Next, we need to determine how much of the 30% hydrogen peroxide we need to add to this 100 milliliters so that we only have sulfuric acid in the end. So we need 0 0.094 moles again of uh, hydrogen peroxide. The mass equals moles equals 34 grams per mole. And that's easy to figure out. This is 16 oxygen. Hydrogen's one, so 16 times two is 32, 33, 34. So we have 34 grams per mole. Then we multiply our molar amount 0 0.094 times the 34, and we need 3.2 grams of hydrogen peroxide. This is just the total number of grams. It doesn't say what volume it's in, so we need to figure that out next. So the volume of 30% H2O2 solution, we take our 3.2 grams of the hydrogen peroxide, divide it by 0.3 grams per milliliter, because that's our 30%, and in the end, we find out we need to add 10.6 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, which will convert all of the sulfurous acid to sulfuric acid, if in fact all of the three grams of sulfur burns up in the beginning. The final molar concentration of our sulfuric acid will be 0 0.85, it's not very strong of course, which would be equal to 8.29%. I already mentioned this a bit, but it's very unlikely that all of the sulfur will burn into sulfur dioxide. So approximately 4 to 5% of it becomes sulfur trioxide all by itself, plus 
any loss sulfur dioxide through the whole process of the experiment. So I'm going to decrease the volume of the hydrogen peroxide by 10%. It's just a guess. And we'll end up adding 9.5 milliliters of the 30% hydrogen peroxide. And I'll say this a couple times, I think, but I think the H2O2, the hydrogen peroxide, will break down with the heat at the very end when we're concentrating our sulfuric acid by boiling it. And we're back. I'll go over this quick. Our methods. We have our water, 100 milliliters, in ice with the stir bar going. And on this end, we have our pump, which is just going to pump air through a tube that has sulfur in it. We'll light the sulfur from the outside. And eventually, it will reach 230 degrees Celsius and light up. As it burns across, it produces sulfur dioxide mostly, some sulfur trioxide. But I'm going to put a filter in here, and we're going to use gravity to some extent. Just filled with cotton. The cotton will prevent any elemental sulfur that might get blown through. But sulfur trioxide is heavier, as we mentioned. We'll get rid of most of it so that only the sulfur dioxide will be coming over into our cold water and dissolving, producing sulfurous acid. Going to number two here, we're simply going to pour the hydrogen peroxide into the sulfurous acid, let them mix well. And number three, we'll take this, which is now sulfuric acid, and boil it down and then test it in the end to make sure we actually have sulfuric acid. This is meant to run the experiment just to see if we can do it successfully, if I can do it. And so I don't plan on making a lot of it, just a little bit, and then we'll test it. But... I'm done talking. Let's go make some sulfuric acid from elemental sulfur. I put some sulfur in some glass tubing I had, which is heat resistant, but I don't think it's borosilicate glass. So I'm testing it here with a simple torch that's hooked up to a propane tank down here. Been a full 15 minutes and the glass is holding up extremely well. So I think this is a go. In a number of my experiments, you might've seen I've used glass um, as a conduit through which I usually send it through a cork or a rubber stopper such as this. So I just wanted to show you how easy this glass is to cut with the Dremel. And done. Not difficult. Three grams of elemental sulfur pre-weighed. I have here a piece of tubing similar to what we just saw that stood up to that heat. And I made a couple of plugs on either end like so. Rubber stoppers with thin glass tubes would fit nicely on either end. And the sulfur would go inside of there, of course, like so. But what I'm concerned about is that these openings are narrow and with air flowing through that eventually the air that's going to hit the outgoing um, tube here might uh, plug that up. So I have an idea. I didn't think about this earlier or I would have discussed it. But I do have that concern of the sulfur coming loose when the air is flowing and it's getting heated and sticking into the uh, outgoing tubing and clogging this. So if I take that glass tubing and heat it and put the bends in it so it's a U-shape, that should take care of the problem. As the air comes through down here and works with the hot sulfur and comes out, it's very unlikely that some of this uh, sulfur will come loose up and all the way out here and block that. So I'm done, and a couple things are very noticeable. Number one is this is not the piece of tubing I showed you earlier. It's much longer. Turned out that was far too short to try to do this. Uh, and the second one is I didn't bend the ends because when I got done bending just this part, I realized that I can put these in, of course. I don't need those bent ends, like so, on both sides, and put it like so. And then the rubber tubing can come off of that uh, in here from the uh, air blower. So I'm going to put the three grams of sulfur in here and plug these in there and then I'm going to seal it up good with this stuff. I finished most of this. I put the sulfur on the bottom here. It really wasn't that hard. Um, I had to find a way to support this so things could dry and I built this little jig with the wires and the wood there to hold it. I'll probably use that when I do the experiment too. Um, and then of course these little rubber stoppers were set in place with the high temperature silicone. I'm now working on getting the little filter set up that will hopefully remove the sulfur trioxide and any elemental sulfur. And this is actually a gas filter. Um, it's brand new. And what I'm going to do is open it up. It's not that hard. Stuff it with cotton. And then I've got a couple different tubes that I can put on either end here. And then this tubing fits inside of this tubing extremely well. I finished putting the cotton in here and sealing it up. And the blue tubing, of course, like I was mentioning, will go right in both ends here. So I just need to mount a few things here. We're almost done. Everything is set up and ready to go. There's the air blower, the tubing through the sulfur, up and around through the cotton filter, continues on into the flask, of course, which will be surrounded by ice, as we talked about. 100 milliliters of distilled water pre-measured. Pouring in the 100 milliliters of water, and to help keep the gas in there as long as possible, I am going to put this crumpled up piece of saran wrap here. Also will allow me to position this tubing above the uh, 
stir there so the stir is not bumping into the tubing as it spins around because the tube's under positive pressure all the time i do not have to worry about uh, any backflow as a test i just turned on the uh, air pump there it's flowing through everything and on this end we can see it's bubbling which is great i have the ice and the water spinning i'm going to go ahead and ignite the sulfur and start on this end because the air is coming from this end here Turn the light off. You can see the sulfur burning with a slight blue flame there. It has a nice slow burn going. This is about 10 minutes later. It's still burning really nice and slow, which is excellent to consume all of it. You can see the left side of the tube that goes up, how cloudy that looks. That is packed with uh, sulfur dioxide probably some sulfur trioxide too and because of the filter it's getting backed up into there But I do see it coming through the top and I took a look in the water. There's no question. It's bubbling through so just being patient It's been going about 25 minutes already believe it or not It's slow burning, but I did want to shine a flashlight on this upgoing tube so you can see what a brilliant yellow it is been about a half hour there's just a smidge of a flame there it is starting to burn up and around the corner of the tube which is interesting I don't know how much sulfur is actually lined on the inside of the upper tube there but uh, it continues to burn I will be back when it's completely out well it was only another three minutes and it went out so um, everything looks good I am going to give the air some time to uh, blow through the tubing there and try and get as much of that uh, gas into that flask over there. So I'll let this run for at least another 10-15 minutes. The residual that's up in this tube, I'm going to try and hit it with the flame for a little bit, see if we can get all that to break down. Well, it wasn't 100% converted, but pretty darn close. We are done making our sulfurous acid. Now we need to move on to the next step and make it sulfuric acid. You can see at the bottom of this filter, it yellowed, so it definitely did its job. Here's our still cold sulfurous acid. Now that this cooled down, we can clearly see that not all the sulfur burned up. I guess that's expected to some extent. So what this means is in the final solution, we'll probably have just a little bit too much hydrogen peroxide, uh, as I do expect to, to keep the volumes the same. But um, I'm fairly confident that in the very end, uh, when the um, solution is boiled, uh, that, that hydrogen peroxide will break down. I'm going to use this 10 milliliter graduated cylinder to measure out the 9.5 milliliters of this 30% hydrogen peroxide we need. Right on the money. I don't believe it. Moving on to this very basic step here. We're going to take the hydrogen peroxide and slowly pour it into the sulfurous acid here. That's really exothermic. You can see the steam forming. That's the last of it right there. I'm going to let this spin and mix for at least 10 minutes. It's probably excessive, but just to make sure it absolutely gets mixed well. been about 12 minutes so i'm ready to turn this off here i do want to mention something i forgot earlier and that is when the sulfurous acid was present in here i um, took a very gentle whiff and boy you know they say it's an irritating smell it sure is but interestingly as i mentioned before this shouldn't smell like anything now i'm not going to test it right now right now i'm going to transfer it to a beaker and then we'll boil it down some more to get our sulfuric acid we just made concentrated all right, transferring the sulfuric acid into this 250 milliliter beaker where we're going to heat it. I suspect there's extra hydrogen peroxide due to the fact that not all the sulfur got burned properly. So this is a step where I believe most of it will be broken down as we concentrate the sulfuric acid. We're also breaking down any excess hydrogen peroxide. All right, that's on. I'll let this set until it gets down to maybe, I don't know, 20, 25 milliliters. I'm guessing. That's just a guess. I'm going to take a break here in the middle of boiling this just to check the pH, something we have not done yet. And I probably won't stick this in there. It's pretty hot. It might actually start to dissolve the pH paper. So 
just going to get it down low enough that it can get saturated. Well, I did touch the liquid after all. Nothing happened, of course. You can see that. And we've got a pretty decently low pH already. I would say it's around 2. It's a little darker than 3, but it's around 2 right now. As this boils down, you can clearly see the steam is turning a little thicker, so to speak, for lack of a better way of saying it. It's turning into just wispy steam into almost uh, the white smoke that starts to appear when you've concentrated the sulfuric acid as far as you can go. So we're definitely getting white smoke at this point, and you can see it into the uh, beaker better if you look from the side. However, I'm going to turn this down now. We're done boiling, and we're just going to move on after this cools down to testing it. It's a little unfortunate, but even though I tried to cool this down as fast as I could, we still lost quite a bit. So there's only about 20, 18 to 20 milliliters left here. So I'm going to transfer this over here. It's not very much, but we can test if it's sulfuric acid. On the left, we have the sulfuric acid we just made. On the right, I dissolved half a gram of barium nitrate in 30 milliliters of water. And you need that much water just to get the barium nitrate dissolved. It's, it's not very soluble. But according to this equation right here, the barium nitrate plus the sulfuric acid will create barium sulfate, which is insoluble and will fall out of solution, plus two nitric acids. This is the most expensive way I can think of, of making nitric acid, but it's great for a test for sulfuric acid. So as I do this, we should see a white precipitate there form on the left-hand side. Boy, it's hard to see, but... I'll show this to you as I drop it in there. We have definitely made sulfuric acid. Not much, but I didn't need much. I already have plenty.